I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I actually missed like the first 15 minutes of this film. I completely forgot about that Winter Wonderland thing going on at Hyde Park. So the tube was so busy at the station that I needed to change at that I ended up not getting on the tube twice. Winter Wonderland? More like Winter Cutterland. Oi! Need for that kind of language, right? This is a family show. Moana, aka Yo, The Rock and Sing is the latest Disney movie in the last big animation of the year. Hey, you gotta get that Christmas toy money. The title comes from the lead character Moana, voiced by Lee Crevalio. She's the daughter of a chief of a Polynesian tribe and destined to be the next leader. However, as Disney characters tend to do, she dreams of adventure and is chosen by the ocean itself to return a special crystal to a cursed island that will lift that curse. To do this, she enlists the help of Maui, a shape-shifting demigod voiced by Dwayne Johnson and also the guy that stole the crystal in the first place. The interaction and chemistry between these characters is the crux of the movie, as for most of the runtime they're really the only two characters on the screen. Luckily, they are of course excellent together, helped in no small part by the planet sized charisma of the real Dwayne Johnson, which shines through in his character. The casting across the board is superb, newcomer Aliti Crevalio was great as Moana, and obviously her singing voice is very Disneyfied, but she imbues the character with a real sense of warmth and authenticity that I don't think you would have got with hiring any old celebrity. And let's face it, the Mouse House can get anyone they want for any role that they want, and they could easily have slapped Anna Kendrick or Jennifer Lawrence or Hayley Steinfeld's name or whoever is up in the poster and taken a few more million in ticket sales. But I think it really is to the movie's benefit that they've hired a heavily Polynesian cast and crew. I mean, obviously I'm not clued up on that culture, but the real love and care for it shines through in every frame. The big name casting is Dwayne Johnson as Maui, which is great casting because let's face it, he's the closest thing we've got to an actual demigod. I have seen buildings smaller than that guy. As I said earlier, his charisma dominates, but I was surprised to hear that the man has some genuine pipes on him. Seriously, have a listen to this. What is the takeaway? Don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway. And the tapestry here in my skin is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been, I make everything happen. Look at that mini mini Maui just look at that. Honestly man, the songs of Moana are catchier than AIDS in the 80s, and that's all thanks to the incredible Lin-Manuel Miranda. You'll of course know him as the man behind Hamilton, the show that's basically the biggest thing on Broadway. With Moana, he's on track to become only the third ever person in the world to be a PGOT winner. That's a Pulitzer, an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. All I'm saying is, you can bet the Moana soundtrack went straight in my phone after seeing the movie. I don't think there's any songs in this that are at risk of invading every facet of your life like Let It Go did, but hey, I'm just warning you that it is a possibility. And we need to clamp that nonsense before it becomes an epidemic again. So if you're a parent and you take your kids to see this and you catch them singing along, you better turn to them and let them know, yo, you better shut the f up. The animation is of course marvellous. I think we're now at the stage where every Disney or Pixar movie that comes out is the best thing we've seen, but the colours in this world are so vibrant and explode out of every frame. It's not all 3D either. In a neat twist, Maui's tattoos move around and come to life, and these have been animated using hand-drawn animation. The variety of textures in this film make for an hour and a half of pure eye candy, and it's a joy to watch. Unfortunately, it's not all as flawless as its visuals. The story is painfully predictable, and the characters behave almost exactly as you expect them to. To be fair, it doesn't follow the Disney formula to a T, and it even pokes fun at that Disney tradition of princesses, and refreshingly, there's no Prince Charming to come along and save the day. Some of the scripted jokes are also so, so cringy. There's one in particular about tweeting that is not going to age well at all. But what I will say is that some of the visual gags are excellent. Overall, Moana is a stellar movie and another feather in Disney's already stupidly well decorated hat. Disney animation is starting to give Pixar a run for its money with Pixar only having one non-sequel between now and 2019. Maybe Disney will soon overtake as a name that's synonymous with exceptional 3D animated movies. Even with the pacing issues and an overly familiar story structure, I still massively enjoyed it and I know the young ones are going to love it and that's what's most important. And you know what? It's just so happy. Even the most dour person is going to leave the cinema with a big grin on their face and singing along to You're Welcome. So I'm going to give Moana four popcorns.
Thanks so much for watching my review of Moana. If you liked it, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to keep up with my content as I put more out. You can click right here to see my latest videos. But if you've already seen Moana or you're thinking of seeing it, leave me a comment below and I'll see you next time.